and you are looking at the front page of the Wall Street Journal this morning. Europe plans for Greece exit top of the front page, top of A1. This is what everybody is talking about. This is affecting the markets. Obviously, we talk about it every day, right? The euro today almost hit 125 even. It has come down very far, very fast, but it stopped right there. What does that mean? What is really going on? There is not a Greek exit as of this minute. We have to emphasize that. But everybody is talking about this, making plans for it. And you can see it reflected in the Forex and the other markets. What does this all mean? Let's get Katie Martin on the line. She's from London. Morning, Katie. How are you doing? Uh, I'm just about holding up. How are you? <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? I mean, good Lord. I just uh, The email exchanges between New York and London newsrooms are enough to bog us all down. Uh, give us the latest right now, because I saw Euro, the Euro almost go under 125 this morning. What exactly is going on there? Well, the Euro held steady after a pretty heavy beating yesterday in Asian hours today. And then as soon as Europe got to work, it just clobbered it and sent it straight down towards 125. In a way, the most worrying thing about this is that there was really no news behind it. We're now in a very sentiment-driven, rumor-driven, nonsense-driven market that's prepared to grasp onto anything and just flows and jittery market conditions are really in control. I should point out, though, actually, you know, we went down towards 125, as you pointed out, against the dollar, but we did sort of stabilize there and even pick up a little bit. But the market is very nervous at the moment and it's willing to grasp onto anything, as I say. Right. Yeah, you know, and I think part of that is because, okay, we had this European dinner slash summit yesterday out of which no real news came. I mean, we're looking at a situation where everyone's looking towards the European leaders to come up with something definitive and they're not doing it. And in the absence of that, like you said, the markets start doing the thinking on their own. And so you get all these rumors, you get all this talk. Everyone is talking about a Greek exit, but nobody is really saying that it's going to happen. We have the vote in Greece coming up in June. Uh, is this a situation where what the markets at least and what really everyone really needs is some leader to come in with a very forceful statement and back it up, obviously also, but we're not getting that right now. Yeah, we are. I think we've had this sort of conversation before. We're very much in a situation now where the market is moving a lot faster than the policymakers. As you said, they had their informal summit yesterday, which delivered nothing particularly concrete at all. They, you know, had a nice dinner, I'm sure, and they talked about growth initiatives and all the rest of it. But they are very much out of step with what's going on with the markets and what investors are thinking, the sorts of levels of concern that are out there at the moment. Um, today we had a pretty specific note, actually, from Citigroup, who's been one of the most vocal banks about the prospect of Greece leaving the euro. They are the people to blame for the term Grexit. They invented it. Oh, um, and they were it. saying if it happens and we think there's a 50 to 75 percent chance that it will, then, you know, pencil it into your diaries for January the 1st because that's when we think it might happen. And so there's quite a short time frame that people are looking at here. It, it, is, all a bit, it is all a bit scary, I have to say. Right. Let's pull up now. Okay, so that's what Citigroup is saying. That's what they're saying in the markets. Let's pull up a quote here from Angela Merkel, the German chancellor. She said, we want Greece to remain in the eurozone, but the precondition is that Greece upholds the commitments it has made. Uh, nothing new. That's been her stance. That's been a lot of people's stance for a while. I mean, you know, it's, you, the, the information, the, the talk that you get out of the Eurocrats, out of the leaders, is all sort of very big picture in the future. Even this idea of euro bonds, which everyone's into right now, that couldn't be implemented tomorrow. That couldn't be implemented this year. It seems like the solutions they're talking about, to the extent that they're talking about any solutions, are very much down the road. And this crisis is very much right now. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're talking about growth initiatives, they're talking about Eurozone bonds, but they've had a very consistent line, to be fair to them, on Eurozone bonds for the past few months, and that is, once the crisis is over, once we're all on a level playing field, then it might be time to think about Eurozone bonds. Doing it in the middle of the crisis is not the way forward. Um, but, uh, yeah, as I say, the markets are moving a lot faster. One of the things, I was talking to a smart cookie in the markets earlier who was saying that one of the reasons why the Euro is not really tanking and bear in mind that in May 2010 or June 2010 it went under 120 based on exactly these same concerns you know, we've been in this crisis for so long but the reason that we're not trading under 120 now or sinking down towards parity on euro dollar is that there is this nagging suspicion in the market that maybe the policymakers could cook something up there is this fear of what we call announcement risk that maybe there will be a big policy initiative international coordinated that could stabilize things it's pure speculation it's to be honest, pure hope, <laughs> yeah. but uh, nonetheless, it's out there, and it is there is this nagging sense that maybe they will do something to stabilize the situation. Right. Well, hey, look, hope is a good thing, maybe the best thing.